I want to see this. I, I want to see Bill Burr. To about this this project, this movie that you're working on, because it's a it's something that you and I have talked about. Because we are friends, we have dined together, we've hung out, our wives have hung out. <laughs> it's um, pictures with big chalices and candelabras <laughs> <laughs> coated. We that did. There was, I had a suit of armor brought in and put in the corner. <laughs> you're talking about uh, th this movie that you've made is a subject that's near and dear to your heart. It's about being dads. Older yeah, dads, right? Old dads, yeah. Old dads. There was something that came about by, you know, uh, not getting my shit together and having kids really late in life. Like, mm -hmm. I'm 54, my kids are five and two. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't realize, like, how much the world had changed. Like, my daughter's in kindergarten now, and I was in kindergarten 50 years ago. So just the whole way that they teach, like everything, literally, I'd be like, oh, you're in the jungle gym? And she'd be like, it's called the structure. <laughs> and, I, and then I'd be like, yeah. And then I'd be like, oh my God, I said jungle. Am I, you know, did that, was that borderline racist now? Like, what did I just say? And right, you just start right. freaking out. And, uh, Is that you know, for real? Sort oh, of, shit. It's, it lives sort of in that world. And then also all of this, this world now of where, you know, you, you go back into somebody's Twitter account eight years and find a bad tweet and they're like, this is who this guy is. This guy's an asshole. And, and it's like, I always looked at it like you had to go back eight years before this guy was an asshole. That's an, that's an amazing like Lou Gehrig run of not being an asshole. <laughs> if you went seven years, like this guy was totally cool, but in 2014, oh. You know, that one random Wednesday, he was really in a mood. Yeah. And, and it was just weird. Someone who I, you know, I lean left. I'm not a hundred percent. This is why Bill Burr is brilliant. I've talked about cancel culture and all this dumb shit associated with it a million times over. And I had never fucking thought about angling it that way. That's a comedian. Like, he's very good. He's very good. That is a funny ass fucking take about cancel culture. Straight up. That left it sort of like you know um i just thought that whole era was really fascinating to watch people like just trying to just sort of ruin people like i understood the beginning of it when they were going after these monstrous people but then it just became this this you know like these ticky tack misdemeanors bullshit and they were just like just burn them down it was like a frankenstein movie like they were all coming up the fucking hill so um, it sort of, you know, subtly lives in that world too. Right. And, 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 you know, one of the things that I relate to you on is we both come from, like I say, a similar part of the country. I'm a little bit older than you. And, but I do relate very much to gingers about being a dad. Uh, you often relate it to when you were contrasted with when we were kids. And that's something that hits home with me because, uh, you know, I had kids later in life. Now they're teenagers but in the early stages, I remember thinking this does not resemble the childhood that I have in any way. Yeah. You know, because first of all, the, uh, the fact that um, so much care and attention is spent on each child <laughs> was something that was, no, I'm not saying that I love my parents, but it was a different attitude. There were six of us. And I remember very clearly at any given time, if you ask my mother or my father, you know, where's Conan? They'd be like, I don't know, you know, he's, yeah. you know, you know, no one knew exactly where you were. They uh, just sent you outside. Like that was a lot of it. They just sort of sent you outside and you went out and you just met other kids your age and came up with stuff to do when you were outside. And then eventually you ran into older kids and then they just beat the shit out of you. <laughs> oh, no. And then this is why, and then you came or, up or a beehive. Which is like a side quest. Like you just braved the elements. Yeah. The funniest way to look at that and go, yay trauma. Like who cares, man? It's like, it's fine. I'm not saying it's better than the way that did that happen to you? Yes, bro. Yes, there was a fucking beehive in a fucking mailbox. And I'm the idiot that, like, tried to throw stones at it, okay? Yeah, of course. Fucking Zoomers are like, uh -huh, yay, trauma. Like, shut up. I'm not one of these, like, Babylon B type motherfuckers, but, like, goddamn. Sometimes, like, sometimes the way you... 
I don't know. The, the way you analyze things is so want to be academic. Like I that I, I did a, a cartoon for Netflix called Episode. But I would rather be bullied like I was mercilessly in fucking real life than cyber bullied like some of these kids now. It's not like kids change. They're still fucking demons, dog. They're still insane. Some of you are literally either in the process of being bullied or also conducting some of that cyberbullying at the moment. Now, you got more tools. It's like, it's like phones made it so that your boss can access you 24-7 and your productivity increase. Now bullies can access you 24-7. There's nowhere to go. You get fucking pants at school, you get physically bullied at school, and then you get cyber bullied when you go home. It's almost worse. It's for family. One of the first episodes is a scene where the young me and this friend are up in a tree and these guys start throwing rocks at us and shooting fireworks. And that was based on a true story. There wasn't fireworks, but it was just me and a friend of mine were climbing trees. We're just climbing a tree because that's what you did before there was no internet. That was like, that was going online, <laughs> climbing a tree and risking your life. So we climbed up this tree and these bigger kids came by and they saw us up there and they just started throwing rocks at us until their arms got tired. We were up there <laughs> like crying, getting hit in the ankles and in the back. And then you just climb down the tree, and then those guys were assholes. But I remember that, and I bring this up because the minute that our, uh, my daughter could drive or my, my son could drive, my wife would check and she could show me on the phone where they were. And I thought, that just blows my mind. It doesn't... It it's doesn't, like J. Edgar Hoover. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't feel right to me that we are that accountable all the time. And sometimes I wonder if I'm just jealous of... There's a, it's, there's a different, there's like a care and attention. Oh, I see what you mean. Do, do you know what I mean? And I wonder because when I watch your comedy, when I, when I watched you at Red Rocks and you're talking about, anytime you're talking about your child or your dad, how the, how the house was tense or there was anger, or people weren't dealing with things appropriately. Uh, I think, yeah, I know what you're talking about. It was an era. And I think I sometimes, when I'm seeing my family and my wife's handling everything so beautifully, for some reason, I become enraged. <laughs> no, I get Why? that. Why? Where was it? Where? What do you mean? They? Eat? You're looking him in the eye and talking to them? What? Weeby did not link this. I linked it. I found it and I clicked on it and I'm excited to watch it. So suck my dick. I like Conan. I think he's great. And I love Bill Burr. So I appreciate it. Okay. Don't you dare skip me. What is this? HL, no, that's wrong, right? Oh, let's just for gore and move on. So, how's your day? Don't you dear skip me. I demand an answer now. I don't know how to respond to this, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to skip that. I'm going to answer it. My day is great. And if you want to skip the top of the hour ad break that's coming right now, well, then all you need to do is subscribe. And your day will be great too. Because at the top of the hour, there's a 60 second ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free. An uninterrupted broadcasting experience is available to you. So, hey, Bozo, thank you for the five, get the subs. Allowing five people to no longer see the ads. Here's the woman ad break now. I'm not going to look at Turkey Slander. I don't care. Azanabi, please watch Turkey Slander. Search in YouTube. No. Wait, what no, is I, this? I totally get that. I remember this one time being in like uh, a grocery store or something like that. And I saw this this kid. Travis started Scat. Crying Thank you for the five gifted. And his mother went over and started hugging him and comforting him. And I immediately, I just felt this urge to go over and trip this little kid. <laughs> oh my God. And then another time, I remember the grocery store, because that's where a lot of, you know, moms have like the kids and stuff. And this kid was going like, hey, mom, can I have candy? And she was just like, no. And then he started crying and it made me laugh. I was going to be like, yeah, get used to that, kid. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you enjoy the unhappiness and pain of a child. I thought I did. But what I un what I I realized Sorry. it had nothing to do with the kid. That was just me with all of my bullshit 
I was jealous of the kid who was getting hugged. Uh -huh. And then I was laughing at the other kid because I related. Like, I remember when a long time ago I saw Sling Blade when it was in the movie theater. And I remember when, when, when he zoomed that guy out of the house in the wheelchair, uh -huh. he's like, get out of my fucking house. And he zoomed him out. And the guy was all helpless. I roared with laughter. <laughs> and I remember I was with these, these, these actors that I was working on something. And they looked at me in this horrified way. Right. And I, I couldn't explain it. You had to be a comedian to understand. Like, I think actors and comedians, they process pain differently right where actors i think are more like examining it where comedians you just pave it over and it's like you're just laughing not because you're happy that happened to someone in a wheelchair you're just laughing <laughs> just how fucking mean it was I, I told you about this that one time my wife was on the plane with me and she we were going somewhere far so she had like a, a tablet and i started watching a movie and she had fallen asleep and i was i was watching a movie and i was laughing so hard i woke her up and then she, you know, when you don't know what somebody's laughing at and you just start laughing, she's like, what are you, what are you laughing at? And I was trying to hide it. And she looked and I was watching Precious. I don't even... Oh my God. <laughs> God. Oh my God. Oh, oh. It was literally, oh my God. <laughs> Some shit, it just gets so mean. It's just so mean. It, it pushes, pushes you through yeah. into comedy again. She was, I, the mother <laughs> said something so fucking mean, and then they just cut to her face, and she was, <laughs> she was so sad. I just, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm being honest. I was wheezing. I was literally like <laughs> laying in the eye. So I was laughing fairness. so hard. The woman I didn't know on the other side of my wife was laughing, and then my wife started punching me in the shoulder. <laughs> Just gave it like the tablet. <laughs> no, she's so you're that's one of my favorite things. It'd be great if you were my a movie wife critic. Such it really a big would be great. And we're always watching TV, and she's forever getting teared up, and I am laughing my ass off. Like she used to watch The Biggest Loser, and these these fat people would be crying I can't. about all the cookies and burgers they were eating. <laughs> and they were crying like they lost a dog or something. And she would be crying with them, and I would just be laughing my ass off. <laughs> so, so. No, most of the world is starving. That's why. Like, I've been to, I went to like India, and I saw this level of poverty that I just maybe want to adopt every kid over here. And then you just come back to America, and there's these slovenly people. Hey, you just can't stop eating Oreos. And it was just so fucking hilarious. Oh. oh. And, uh. Oh, this won't end. And then, no, and then, then it's like. Uh, I can't do this. This won't come And then out. what it is is because my wife gets. No one gets, will ever hear this. My Relax. wife gets mad at me for laughing. It makes it like. Oh, dude, I have worse ones than that. I got worse ones Let's, than that. We might as well get it out now because we're. I can't say safe. this one to protect people. Uh, you guys aren't going to laugh at this one because you're told you're not supposed to. No, no, that's not this crowd. All right, this some dude beat the shit out of his girlfriend, right? Well, you're off to a good start. I don't know. You know how to get a crowd. You had them. You had them. You're like, yeah, I can top that. I have how to else go. are you supposed to watch the news? Am I really supposed to be going, oh, <laughs> for the whole time? Or you can laugh. I mean, it's a choice. I, I have to like, go. Like, how does it help me? <laughs> but how, okay, I want, you to, I want to hear you pull this out. So my wife was so, so sad about it that I had to make a joke because I wasn't mature enough to be sad with her. Right. So I was going like, what do you think she said? What do you think that, that last oh, thing she God said, right? Sake. You know? Yeah, exactly. So she gets all mad, right? So... <laughs> she got really mad. Why did she I'm marry? not laughing at that. That's terrible. <laughs> She's lovely. I've met her. She's wonderful. So then like a week later, my mother-in-law comes over, right? <laughs> the fucking story comes on the news. And after the story's over, she goes, I know I shouldn't say this. My wife goes, Mom, don't say it. And she just goes, I wonder what the last thing she said. <laughs> <laughs> and I died laughing. My, my mother-in-law died laughing. And my wife stormed out of the room. Yeah, but at the end of the day, neither one of us beat her up. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> she can't hear us laugh. I'm not happy that that happened.
This is a deeply, deeply strange response of a grown adult to suffering in the world. I wonder why he doesn't have any other skills to respond to problems that are beyond his own. Bro. He already said it's a coping mechanism. Um, like, he's admitting it. Like, the joke in that situation. Okay. We're back to... <clears throat> We're back to the Hasanabi corner where Hasanabi explains jokes and the concept of laughter to a bunch of leftists who maybe sometimes also happen to be neurodivergent. Okay. Now, in that situation, sometimes, not always, okay? In that situation, the joke comes from the obvious uh, uh, worst response that you can have. Bill Burr as we all understand it, is, of course, anti-domestic violence, okay? This is a real problem that impacts plenty of partners, and, and it is usually also very, uh, you know, uh, it, it, there's, al there's always one sex or one, uh, there's always one gender that is uh, a, a victim in a lot of these circumstances. So what Bill Burr is doing here is basically saying the worst possible thing he could say, it's like, a dead baby joke. When someone makes a dead baby joke, they don't literally mean like, you know, that's awesome that babies are dying. Um, it's kind of like uh, when I say, uh, when I laugh at children uh, in pain. Like, it's funny. You can laugh in that situation. It's okay. Like, it's not, you know, or, or if something happens, I go, like a kid is like bullied or something. And I say, what about the vibes of the kid? Were the kid's vibes fucked? Basically the same thing. Okay. It's just uh, a, a way to uh, undercut through hyperbole the seriousness of an environment. Well, there's I a, don't understand what the fucking news is. It's Wait. just like, hey, here's a bunch of shit you can't fix that happened that was horrible. Ah! Do you know what my gym? <laughs> At my gym, they literally play CNN, and it's just the whole state of California's on fire, school shootings and shit. It's like, I'm coming here to get away from this shit. I'm on a fucking elliptical, and I gotta watch people's houses burning down. Right, right. How long are you supposed, you're trying to make this seem like three hours on the elliptical? So we should, should be showing like, I don't know, Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is going good, Cone. I think it's going really well. I think it's going That was pretty funny. Now, what about when you're doing your sets in a comedy club, have you- It's okay until the point you start to defend it? Wait, what do you mean? I'm not defending anything here other than defending the principle of laughter and how like the mechanics of laughter works unfortunately there are plenty of people on the left that don't comprehend that that's it do you have people that get into it with you that say okay you've crossed the line i don't like this or do they mostly um at this point people come in because they like what i do bro some chatters are insane yes but I think it's an important part of uh, community building here at the Hassan Abbey broadcast to sometimes defend the concept of jokes and the principle that is like laughter is is fine. No, like I, I I think like every time I have this conversation, there's at least a thousand fucking weird like new leftists who go, okay, maybe it's okay to laugh sometimes, you know? I'm not even kidding. I'm not even joking. I, I legitimately believe that there are people in this chat who are like, who think that it's completely inappropriate to laugh. Like, across the board. Do you apply that same logic to Chappelle stuff? Yes, most of his shit. Not the transphobia stuff, though, because it's not coming, it's not even a joke. Like, I have literally defended the one fucking funny joke that Dave Chappelle has about trans pussy saying it's beyond pussy or it's impossible meat pussy like that's funny except it's sandwiched between two incredibly unfunny things either it's like a 4chan fucking uh, attack helicopter meme that's rehashed or him just straight up saying i'm a turf i'm a trans exclusionary radical feminist it, it, it literally is not even delivered like a joke okay
Yeah, and also for someone says, I wonder what she said isn't a joke either. It's lazy as fuck. It's a joke we've all heard from our shitty uncles. No, because when your shitty uncle says that, he's not even fucking joking. That's the difference. Because context matters in the circumstance as well. Do but like before I got to a certain point. Yeah, I had a lot, had a lot of those. I remember some woman. I said something about animals, and I remember she got so mad at me, and she came up. You know, I was selling my DVDs. <laughs> it's how long ago this was, and uh, I don't know she got into it with me about this stupid joke. And then I remember she was so proud of herself. In the end, she goes, you know, just to, she goes just to let you know. She goes, I'm a card carrying member of PETA. <laughs> like she got a degree or something. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, what is that, like 25 bucks? You just sort of paid your way into that. <laughs> and how'd that go over? For me. Never beating the misogynist allegations last one. I'll be, no, I don't care, dude. You're a fucking humorless piece of shit. Fuck my dick. Listen, bro. People say I'm racist. People say I'm misogynistic. People say I'm transphobic. I don't give a fuck. Literally spend more than three and a half seconds in here and you'll understand that none of those things are true. The problem is most people just only come in here just to rehash those memes and go, la, 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 can't hear you. Don't care. Even the racism allegations I can defeat now. Look at that. Don't make me pull it out. There was a time and place when people used to say, Hassan, you're an anti-white racist. Okay, that time and place is past. I literally have the past here. I could say it. Don't make me. I could. If I wanted to. Me, it was fun. <laughs> it was like that was one of my favorite things is when people would get mad and then they would like yell at you. They would do all kinds of weird shit. I remember I pissed off this one guy. I think I was in Texas and I said something liberal that he didn't like. And he came up afterwards and he shook my hand and I shook his hand and he just goes, I just paid. <laughs> <laughs> he showed you. <laughs> no. I love the dichotomy. I love the contradiction. Pelosi's hangers. Like this guy's fucking account. This guy's account is about Pelosi's titties, bro. His username is Pelosi's hangers. And he's telling me I'm like a child because I fucking eat and talk with my mouth full. Thank you, Pelosi's hangers, for, for you know, correcting the record here. Uh, I really, I really learned something today. I, I shouldn't be a child. You're right. This is honestly white people are a vibe at a hangout if racism is low key the wave. What? What does that even mean? Where are these sock accounts coming from? And I just laughed. I didn't give a fuck. I also was a really angry guy. And uh, the shit. Is that a joke? Is that like a copy pasta? Is that some fucking Zoomer copy pasta that I'm oblivious to because I'm old and I don't go on TikTok that much? You can unban him if that's the I case. I used to Sorry. say it was just a lot of it was fucking, you know, I don't know what it was. And I remember a lot of times people dragging people out like people didn't give a fuck. were dragging somebody out who was yelling at me. My favorite thing was the person, this was guy who wanted to beat the shit out of me during the show and they threw him out in classic comedy club security the guy gets back in to beat the shit out of me but he stood in the line at the dvds <laughs> waiting to beat the shit out of me that he's very patient so, and he's he's yeah. a rule he's a rule follower yeah so i had to go bounce like that guy third guy down that guy's gonna punch me in the face when it's his turn can you go over there and uh, get rid of him uh-huh yeah there was you know there was a lot of that type of stuff you know I don't know. I, was, I, I referenced the Red Rock special because that's the last one I've seen. You do. You have another one coming out, right? Do you have another no. special coming out or that's no. going to be it for a while? Yeah, that'll be it. That'll be it for a while. I don't really like where my act is right now. I'm trying to, it's, it's too much of this, not enough of this. So I, I always have to have like that balance of annoying that's people awesome. and then sort of also being like, all right, I'm, I'm an idiot, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, but that's a good I take. Think, and this is worth talking about. Like I know over COVID, 
I, I ran into you, came it's by. It's still going, Conan. <laughs> Please. It never existed. Uh, <laughs> that's my little pet peeve. It's my little pet peeve. Oh, I got the mask on. I got, the, um, I got it really into vaccines during COVID. I can't stop getting them now. <laughs> Do they, ma- hey, do they I make? I just you- got the shingles one. I got my second one. Do they make you? Uh, do they make you sick? The shingles one. The first time I felt a little weird, and uh, and then the second one, I, I had a little bit of a headache yeah. like the next day. But like, to not have like shingles, whatever the fuck those are. I got those once. Oh, I got, got those. Uh, years I got those ago too. When I was first starting out in L.A., oh, I got how shingles. And sightly, were you a ginger with shingles? Yeah. Oh and guess God. what? I got them on my optic nerve of oh, my eye, no. and so oh, it just half my almost, face literally. Almost me too. That's crazy. I got it in the back of my head. Luckily, it didn't travel to my fucking optic nerves, but yeah, you can go blind from that half because the nerves of your face are symmetrical. Got swollen and I was in excruciating pain and <laughs> couldn't drive anything. <laughs> look, look, look at you laughing. I never had it, but I had chicken pox, so you have it. It's just dormant in your body. That's what it is. How do you get them on the roof of your head? Brother, it literally happens. It happens, especially at younger ages. Like it happens to older people because they're immunocompromised. But it just straight up happens to young people because of stress. That's it. Yeah, it's herpes. Yeah, you're right. It is. Yeah. It's a it's a type of herpes. Yeah. And it is fucking awful. They where the one I had on my head. They say shingles, like, especially if you get it on your head, is like the, what are they, I think they call it like the suicide disease or something. Because, like, I would have massive fucking headaches, like, nonstop. I, I literally was like, I don't know how I'm going to fucking continue. Like, it was crazy. Herpes zoster. It's, it is in the same, uh, it is in the same family as herpes, yes. Just the absolute fucking worst, dude. It just went away. Yeah, it goes away. But it has a capacity not to, which is really fucking terrifying. But the, um, the, the, the awful thing is that like, you just, you're kind of, I think cluster headaches are the suicide disease. Yeah. It's just like zonking you. I don't know how to describe it other than just like, it just straight up. There's no way to. There's no way to combat it. But yeah, if you get it, if you get it in the front of your face, you can go blind. Because I just pictured you in like a Batman movie, like being that that face off guy. Two, two, his name's Two Face, not Face Off. Two Face, right? Two Face. Two yeah. face and shingles. I had. They're coming for Gotham. <laughs> Half my face was completely to the was red and swollen, and I couldn't. I couldn't. I could, I could, I, this is like, this is killing you, my pain. Uh, I'm I, just thinking of your poor wife. You just screaming in agony. No, I wasn't married. I had. I was. I was living alone. This is oh, in L.A. No. 1987. They had shingles I, back then. Yeah. <laughs> I think it started I with that me. Was new. I was patient zero, and uh, I walked. Would you fuck a monkey or something? <laughs> well, you that's, know, that's none of your sh- business. That's how shingles came about. <laughs> Somebody finger banged the back. And then went to SeaWorld and got in the goddamn pool. <laughs> that goddamn Conan O'Brien could have kept his freckled fingers to himself. <laughs> Let's just say I may or may not have finger fucked a bat. bat. Okay? Hey, what you do it on your own time? It was the mid 80s. It's what shit was, did. It's what people did. 
First of all, it's a bat. That's still a mammal. Yeah. Right? So that's still within the Bible. Yeah. That's I fair game. <laughs> Man can lay, can fuck with mammal. Uh, yeah. Old Testament. Uh, yeah. There's wow. nothing about a man laying with another bat. <laughs> in the Old or New Testament. No, so yeah, I remember walking because I had no one to drive me and I couldn't. I walked to. I, I walked, Lonely, un, I walked, unfamous Conan. I walked to Cedar Sinai with, Hospital. With I'm, shingles. It's my favorite thing ever. I'm the height I am now. But I was, so I'm 6'4", but I weighed about 150 pounds, and half my face was, half my pumpkin head was swollen and deformed, and I was staggering oh. down the street to Cedar Sinai. <laughs> and it hurt Just so much. dragging a foot going, I went to Harvard! I went to Harvard! <laughs> Someday, they'll put an athletic bottom on a wingtip show! And I shall own it! Just chunks of my face falling off. I'm still better than all of you. <laughs> oh, that always goes well. That was pretty good. Bill Burr's brother used to record his parents' arguments. I have empathy for like kids and animals. Oh, okay. That's nice. That's it's a nice some- start. It's That's something. a start a kit. It's yeah. something. That's that's a step in the right direction. Ooh. I'm sorry. No, they say mean, Jesus. I didn't mean no, to. they say that's no, you know what? I'm old enough to I'll never satisfy you. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, a they, step in the right direction. They say that that is what uh, would separate you from say a, a sociopath, a serial killer, is that you care about animals, you, you care about children. So that's that's good. That's good there news you go. for you today. Because I've taken those polls. You ever see that poll? Are you a serial killer? With a test. <laughs> yes, I yeah, have. Yeah, after the have, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Bill Burr taking the Are You a Serial Killer poll? That's weird. I've taken that test. After- it has not gone well. Yeah, exactly. After the fourth question, you're like, all right, let's. Uh, I don't know. I don't even take the <laughs> Do you laugh am, am at the pain late- and misery of others? Uh, <laughs> I think we got that one. If it's on TV, and I don't like, look, I don't. I'm trying to think of something. Uh, yeah, no, I think I do. <laughs> Every time I saw that guy wipe out on his scooter. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was, it was amazing. <laughs> he was this older guy. <laughs> well, that's always funny, though. Falling, people falling an old, always. Wait, an older laugh. man was on a what? He's on a scooter? He's on a scooter. He was riding like a Harley, and he, like, he came whipping out. It was one of those, I was on the other side of the road, and there was this concrete divider. And he, he just, he was going too fast, and he couldn't make the turn. And he hit the, 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 the concrete thing and he high sided and oh. went like up and over, just like landed and just slid on his face. Oh my and God. I had to like, oh I had to stop my car, right? Uh-huh. And I was the first guy there. And he had rolled over on his back and I walked up to him and he was just like, unconscious, just going like, ah, yeah. <laughs> It's like spitting teeth. <laughs> oh, get to the funny part. <laughs> oh my God. The, funny, the funny part is when this cop finally shows up. The guy was like fucking like 55. It's like, should he have been retired by now? When did you start becoming a cop and you're still driving a cruiser? So he pulls up and just completely could give a fuck. He just walked up to the guy. He has hands in his pockets. And he just looked over and he just goes, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. I you relate just... to this. When I was a kid, I don't know if you ever saw this, but there was uh, some Christian network. Classic cop behavior, dude. Come on. That's hilarious. Back then, no, there was nothing on TV. There right. were a couple of channels. There was never anything good on. And there was this show that we used to watch that was made with uh, sort of claymation puppets called Davy and Goliath. Oh, yeah. And they always supposed to have a good moral about how to behave. Davy was a boy who would sometimes do naughty things. And then he'd learn his lesson. And it was put out by some association of ministers. I swear to God, my brothers and I would watch this. Because there was, <laughs> you would flip the channel and they're bowling on one channel. And there's a Catholic mass on the other channel. Uh, so you'd watch. Bro, this dude was a child in 1937. Holy shit. There's like two channels on the TV. Davy and Goliath. Because at least it was a story and there was some claymation. Right. Anyway. I gotta she, pee. I'll be back. <laughs> Davy and Goliath go camping with the dad and the mom, <laughs> and Davy goes off and he sees a well, and uh, or he sees a, a beautiful natural pond, and he finds some paint, some raspberry paint, and he pours it into the pond, <laughs> turning it all bright, you know, red, 
And yeah, it's a big bucket. And, yeah, huge bucket. Well, it was a little little pond. And then he's laughing. He says, "Look, Goliath, I made a big thing of raspberry goop." And then the father comes in and yells at him and says, "Look what you've done!" And all the animals are gathered around and they can't drink from this pond anymore oh, because brother. it's been ruined. My brothers and I were laughing so hard. <laughs> we were crying. We were laughing so hard. I'm telling you, I understand exactly what you're talking about. He, I think these animals ended up dying. <laughs> and my brothers and I are on the floor laughing oh that Davy had said, look, I made a big thing of strawberry goop. It's terrible. I'm sorry, but There's that... no reason to apologize. Yeah, they were, they were claymation animals. No, there is. Like nobody there died. There is. You know, we, did you ever pour raspberry paint into a pond? No, I so saw that. Fine. But if I had, you, you can know. sit there and laugh. You know what I love is when Dave, when Davey every once in a while would get into a fight and he would get the shit kicked out of him. Uh -huh. His, because it was claymation, it didn't have the, the, the money. His hair was still perfect. And then they just put a couple of strands of clay on his forehead <laughs> <laughs> to indicate that Davey got his ass kicked. <laughs> These are they the have things. no idea what we're talking about. This, this show was on 65 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> but this is, I'm trying to explain our childhoods. This is what it was like back then. There's nothing to watch, nothing to do, and occasionally someone in the house would lose their temper in a way that would frighten you, and then it was never spoken about again. Yeah. Yeah, that was basically, that was it. My brother, I, I don't know if I'd ever tell you this, my brother was like a genius, man. He used to, my, my parents used to argue. He had a, he had a, uh, a dual cassette boombox and he used to record the argument and then put music underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the greatest ones ever was he put Led Zeppelin No Quarter, which has this really, John Paul Jones plays this haunting keyboard. It was right, there. It, it, like, it was scored yep. perfectly because it started off slow with them going back and forth and then <laughs> gradually, and just Robert Plant, close the door, put out the light. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one was a little bit mid. It's not as good as uh not it wasn't as good as the other ones. Um <clears throat> question mark. And right his bottoms drums. But I back came in my dad. I fucked out to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Dude, we used to it's listen the to older that folks, fucking uh, thing it, for it, like it's, years. It's appealing to the and older then, people in the chat. We finally played it for my dad and he laughed his ass off. He's like, oh, he, he, liked it. he thought it was hilarious. He thought it was fucking hilarious. He never understood anything. We had him watch the great Santini one time, hoping that he would get it, and he didn't. He ended up just loving the movie. And just walking around going, I am the great Santini. We're like, no, no, it's about to... a dad who's who's very abusive to his son. Yeah, who loves his family but doesn't understand that he's slowly killing everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And your dad watched that and thought, thank you for showing me oh, he thought this was... uplifting film about it how was... we should all behave. It was like... Okay, dude. All right. <laughs>